Faith and Finance. Good morning, Drew. Hey, good morning, David and Ron. Well, yeah, I turn your mic on first. There you go. Here you, he's ready to go. All right. Good morning, uh, David and Ron. Thanks morning, for Drew. having me. Yeah, we're yeah. looking forward to continue this conversation a few weeks in now and uh, this understanding about how we should conduct ourselves in the world of finance, uh, making sure that it's centered around our faith. Yes. Um, I'm pretty excited about this segment. Oh, good. Um, what we did, we talked last time, was the councils, what the church declared, what usury is, and mm. how it's a sin. So I want to read the uh, Fifth Lateran Council again, the, the one line where it says, For that this is the real meaning of usury, when from its use a thing which produces nothing is applied to the acquiring of gain and profit without any work, any expense, or any risk. Mm. Mm. So what's the application to that? Uh, what is a great writer is Hilaire Belloc that lived from 1870 to 1953. He was a prolific oh, wow. Anglo so French writer, modern, yeah, poet, historian known for his witty essays. So he mm. wrote um, essays. He was into politics and economics. Sounds like me, <laughs> witty. <laughs> oh no, never mind. <laughs> So he envisioned a socio-economic system of distributism, and that's mm. that's a Catholic principle economic system that many don't know about. He wrote a book called The Servile State, uh, which after his um, party political career had come to an end. He criticized the modern economic order and advocated distributism in opposition to both capitalism and socialism. Mm. Oh, wow. Belloc made his historical argument that distributism was a fresh perspective or program of economics, but rather a proposed return to the economics that prevailed in Europe for a thousand years. So many, mm-hmm. many said that was new. His point was this is what Catholic Europe has always been about. Mm-hmm. And then things were changing. Hmm. So brilliant. He, he wrote this essay. And I think this gives a great perspective. What does it mean with a true investment? Because now we're looking at true business investment, not creating wealth out of nothing, not mm. giving loans and without any risk, just like the Fifth Lateran Council. Mm-hmm. So his essay says, if a man came to him saying, I have found on his property or, and he believes that it could have, uh, let's say, $100,000 worth of wealth, mm-hmm. but he lacked capital to actually get that done. Mm. He had to have the machinery to get uh, get out the ore. He had to hire the labor. He had to do that. So he went to Bellock's writing to him saying, I need to borrow money so I can extract this ore. Mm-hmm. And he said, if I do so, you must give me a share of the profit. Mm. Let's say half a total. So they agree to that. Mm. And his whole point was it's ethical. It doesn't matter if you make 50% on your original investment, 500%. It's about an agreement of the share of the risk and the profit. Mm. Mm. And then that would be an ethical loan. That would be an ethical. And that's not usury. That's an actual investment. Mm, Then he used the other example. He said, what if he lent the money to the person? He says, I do not care what your profits may be, Mm. but I want a perpetual 10,000 per year off the $100,000 right. investment. So if the person was not successful in this example, he's going to require or acquire the 10,000 interest. Not, it doesn't Every matter. Year. Right. So then he'll take his land, mm. he'll take his property. If he doesn't make the ore uh, or find the ore in the ground and it would be devastating to him and mm. his family. Mm. So he also then connected this to the, uh, the great war, war, war one. He said, all the loans that were issued to these countries were loans that had nothing to do with pr- productive loans. Mm. Mm-hmm. And what these were, they were loans to uh, provide food, armament, uh, weapons mm. that to kill each other. Right. And then the countries that lost, they were still had to pay those they loans. Had to pay those loans. And it was an unjust thing that killed the, the civilian mm. or uh, society for years to come. They had yeah. the hyperinflation in Germany and stuff. Yeah. So he's, he's connecting that, that we must be tied to the risk mm. of the investment. Mm. And I think that's the important uh, takeaway from what the church is teaching uh, about risk, a share of the risk. And then what it, what it does as well, the investor, the one who's investing the money into the, the person that's going to uh, do the work, he must do his due diligence. Is this a good investment? Right. Rather than throwing your money out, guaranteed money, take property if, right. if he doesn't, if he isn't successful, it gives an incentive to make sure that, that the actual investment is You're really tied a good to investment. the end result. And you benefit from the end result if it's, if it goes well, but you lose equally with the person that you've invested with if it doesn't go well. Yeah. But you don't get to take other things from them in addition to uh, what they would have produced if it went well. 
Yep, and I think the main point is, is the loan productive or mm. is it an unproductive mm. loan? And you got to ask that question. Mm. Pro- productivity is a good thing, and a share in that wealth is what should uh, be made. Difference between an investor and a lender, you know, to a certain degree. And what a what a great contrast to, like, payday loans, you know, where you're in the business of providing a product, money, at at a uh, at an investment cost. And tied to even more of a uh, uh, thing that affects us all, look at the banks when they lend money to uh, about a home, right? Mm-hmm. They actually create money out of nothing. It's not money coming out of a savings account. Right. They create money, and they give the loan to you. And if you don't pay it back, what do they do? They, they have, get the house. They get yeah. the house. That's, yeah. that's risk-free. There's no risk mm-hmm. in the loan, and they get 100% of it. Um, and, and then people are paying a $300,000 mortgage. You're paying about 460000 on interest for right. 30 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you've more than doubled the actual loan amount by the time you're done with it. And the house is not a productive loan. Yeah. You're not producing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and look, it doesn't mean that everything in our economy is absolutely sinful or anything like that. It, it's the fact that we as Catholics are obliged to look at those things that don't line up with our faith, and at least in our own personal lives, begin to weed those things out. Agree. Yep. That, and you, yeah. you know, you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. We live mm-hmm. in a, a cat. We we are in the midst of a capitalist society. We have to live in that. But how do you do that according to your faith without offending what has been church teaching for a thousand years or more? And it's important to see as well that the sin of usury is always with the lender, mm. not the borrower. Right. We live in this society. We have to get by. We have to buy a home. We have to get a car. We have to do the, these kind of things. Uh, but the sin is always with the lender mm. that lends at interest, that tries to make a profit, a non-productive loan. Okay, so let's let's take this because now we've just got a minute or so left. Let's take this into the area of reality for us. Someone needs a loan, someone that we know, someone we trust. Uh, Can we do that? We can do it just dollar for dollar, not really uh, asking for any interest in return. Luke 635, Christ said, lend freely and ask nothing in return. Yeah. So, yeah. And you, you're allowed to get your, you're you're allowed to get your money back, back yeah. mm-hmm. but not, not to make a profit on your brother. Mm. There you go. Good stuff. Once again, Drew, wonderful segment. Appreciate that. Look, and we're going to continue this conversation oh, yeah. for the next, all the Fridays until Jesus comes back <laughs> because there's a lot of ground to cover mm-hmm. and a lot of things that need uncovered. So we appreciate it, Drew. But thank you. All right. God bless you, brother. Yeah, have a great day. And uh, hopefully you learned something. I know I did. I did as well. Thank you. Cool.